Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're going to dye some yarn. Of course we're going to dye some yarn. It's Dye Pot Weekly after all and that's what we do over here. Today we are going to play with a resist dyeing technique where we will use some reusable zip ties, um, add it onto some yarn, remove them, add color. But the difference is that we're going to do a few more layers of this process than we have done at other times in the past. And I'm really, really excited to create this colorway I have in my head today. Today's video is sponsored by Sarah Pyform. Sarah, I really hope I said your last name correctly. If you would like to learn more about how you at home as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you get 100 grams of yarn and shout outs in the video. Uh, you can find all the details in the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And you can find details in the video description and in that little eye symbol card up in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now I just pointed to the top left hand corner. It's hard <laughs> when you're dealing with the mirror image, but I'm trying, <laughs> I promise. Okay, let's jump into it. Today we are gonna dye 300 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino. I love it, I use it a lot. Um, I have already secured each of the skeins with a reusable nylon zip tie to use as an extra tie. This will help prevent things from getting too, too tangled today in our dyeing process. And I'm gonna start adding some resist points with some of these reusable zip ties that I will be pulling tighter on our skeins. If you would like to learn more about the zip ties that I'm using or any of the other materials or equipment, I do have affiliate links in the video description. For each tie, I am pulling it fairly tight. Um, in some cases, I'm gonna put uh, too close to each other. In some places, I might keep it a little more spread out. I'm aiming today to treat all three skeins a bit similarly. And my reason for this is that the colorways will be slightly different because even in here, there's the yarn on the outside will take up some color, but the yarn more on the inside will take up less. And that could give differences on the different skeins. And so it'll be worth seeing how similar or different they are in the end. Okay, so that was around like half of each of the skeins. And then let's do tight one here in the middle. Let's go over to the end and do another. Now my ability to treat all three skeins really similarly will be diminished as we do the next rounds of resist. Um, so after this first round, we are going to dye the yarn one color. Then we are going to come and I think we're going to remove all of the resists. Um, move them, move the resists to different places, dye a second color, and then move the resists a third time and over dye with a third color. The colors we're going to use today are Dharma Sour Apple, followed by Dharma Frozen followed by Dharma Dark Navy. These are all acid dyes, which work to dye protein-based fibers like wool that we have here today. Now, if I was gonna deal with, the, if the third color I was gonna use was another bright color, then maybe I would leave some of the resist from the beginning on to get that sort of pure. But I think the navy is actually gonna cover up a lot of the other colors that we have here in the yarn. So that's part of the reason why I will remove all the zip ties and move them after each round. What this should do is give us some of the bright frozen blue, some of the bright bright sour apple green, and then maybe some teals, depending on where we place those final resists for the last round of yarn dyeing. In my dedicated dye pot, I have 24 cups of water, and I am going to add a half of a cup of white vinegar, which is about the equivalent of eight tablespoons. This should be plenty acidic for all of the colors to bind. 
for the sour apple, let's start with a quarter cup. I think I definitely want more color. We are doing 300 grams of yarn. And I have a little bit shy of a second quarter cup of this green color. We are dyeing 300 grams of yarn today. Um, so we probably have maybe around 100 milliliters or about one gram of dye total, approximately. I am so, so excited, Sarah. Okay, I have not pre-soaked the yarn um, or pre-wet or anything. I am just going to go ahead and dunk it on in. Now, there is going to be some natural resist in here based on the fact that the yarn is dry. And the yarn won't be dry from the other stages. But because the yarn is dry, that means the dye can penetrate some areas easier than others. And so that is just one initial difference that we'll be able to see right off the bat. But I press that down. And now I'm going to reduce the heat to low. And let's go ahead and wait 15 minutes. Um, and we'll check in and see how much of the color has absorbed. I can already tell that all of the color has absorbed. Ooh, this is heavy. I'm draining a bit of the water before I set this aside to cool. I'm going to turn off the heat in the process because I want this to cool enough so that way I can comfortably remove the resists and add new ones. Even with the steam, you can probably see some areas that are paler and that are darker. This is from the yarn being dry, but also some of the way the resists are and the way that different, the dye doesn't have as much access to some of the yarn as the rest. Here is our green yarn. And let's get ready to take a look. Let's start off with this edge and we'll remove it. But you can see, we see a lot of white without even removing these resist points. The white within these zip ties is maybe a bit brighter, but actually I guess that is from a zip tie because there's a tie there. But the area that gets covered up is greater than what you just see from the tie because we're holding so much material. If we tied with say yarn or something like I've done in the past then we might be able or even use zip ties over smaller areas we might be able to keep it a little more separate and after I remove these ties I will lay out all of the skeins so we can see what they look like after this first round but even right here you can see that in the here it's like white and then some white and green. Then in other sections it's just a longer white section. It just depends on what surface area is available. After this first round, there are definitely similarities between all three. But there are some differences as well, such as the size and placement of some of these brighter patches. Let me reduce the... Um, so you can see that these ones, if they're all lined up here, the solitary one sort of shifts around. They're not identical. Um, it's possible you could get things to line up more identically, but I think part of the fun is that we will have some differences between all the skeins with this technique. For the next round, I am going to do things a little similarly in that in one area, and I'm going to pick the brightest, darkest green area. I'm going to cinch it together. Um, this time, though, I think I might use three zip ties uh, to just cinch this together. And so, even like within one skein, it's not going to create a perfectly symmetric colorway. Okay, so we've got that. Let me sort of lay this out. I want to leave white sections available because I want to get some of the bright blue there. And I think we'll go a lot heavier 
with the ties for the third round so we can keep some of the brighter tones being present. And you know, I could grab more zip ties as well, but given that, and it depends also on how much navy we are going to use for that third stage. Uh, maybe I want to grab one more tie. I'll do one more right here. And here we go, ready for round two. This is the same dye bath that we were using before. But this time we are going to use three quarters of a cup or about 180 milliliters of the 1% stock solution of Frozen. Frozen, although it can be really, really bright, is a paler and therefore somewhat less pigmented blue than some other blues that I use. And so this is the reason why I wanted to use more of it. Otherwise, this is the identical dye bath that we used before, but I've turned the heat back on. And actually, we're a little steamy, so I'm gonna go ahead and add our yarn in. Let's plop it in, come through, give it a bit of a stir. There is also gonna be some resist from just crowding that will happen. Um, but again, I chose to remove all of the resists between the first and second layer of color, but you could choose to leave some of those resists on so that way you still have some white for coverage with a third color. Um, I just, I know my third color is deeper and so even though we could have some elements of the green and blue shine through the navy, it's not necessarily the case that we'll see that, so that is my rationale there. But now let's wait 15 minutes. Sour Apple and Frozen are definitely some of my favorite dye colors. Ooh, you can see some of the white where we still have some of that green. Honestly, for the navy stage, I could keep things as they are and just add more resist, but I think I'll still remove and re-add just for some fun. Sour Apple and Frozen are definitely two of my favorite colors. I love this teal they combined into. Once again, I am going to let this cool so that way we can comfortably remove and add new resists. I think we might be at risk today of having one of those situations where you guys will all be at home screaming for me to stop. This is beautiful. And we haven't even like done the last color. And so I know there's always, it's always hard because people um, sometimes want me to stop and sometimes people wish I would keep going. Oh, this color is beautiful on its own. Ah! I am going to carry on, but oh, these like pops, there is some white left because of the unevenness of that color, but these pops of the brighter green are just beautiful. And it's fairly subtle, too. And by subtle, I mean that they're not sharp, it's a little random, uh, compared to if I just did the bright green and navy, then they would pop way more. But since these colors are all more similar, um, yeah, it, it just feels like, not that this is a subtle colorway, but the differences feel subtle. Lining up all the yarn is now more difficult. You can see how these are related and you can feel a lot of the similarities in here. What's harder is that, well, I mean, <laughs> we've got a lot of very subtle differences just from the resist and having this, having them all combined together. Uh, I'm still really happy and they still definitely feel like the same colorway, but I think that the odds of getting two identical skeins when you're hand dyeing yarn, it's pretty, pretty hard, I think, to get two things that you could truly call identical. Okay, so let's now add resists for round 
three. And I'm gonna go, and again, do taking it apart and putting it back on, I think is gonna do something pretty fun because once again, like as I open this up, we've got some of this more green versus teal in this section, but it's not gonna be the same throughout, and I think that that is kind of cool. Okay, trying to pick a more blue pocket to preserve. And I have to decide how much navy I am going to be putting in the pot. Because I'm not going for erasing everything that's left. I would like some of it to show through. But I am adding more resist points. And you can see each spot, the colors that I am collecting together aren't the same. So let's get, let's do two more. Joke, let's do three more. But I'm going to do them real close together, closer than I did over there. There's a little bit of space left, but not a ton. And again, you don't need to use zip ties for this, but the reason why I like to use zip ties for this project is that the zip ties are easy to remove again. If you tie on string or rubber bands, you have to try to remove them when it can be more difficult. It's really easy to snap these zip ties back open. I added an additional 16 cups of water to the same dye bath that we have been using. In part because I want our colors to be able to strike, but I want there to be time for me to add all the yarn and move things around a bit before this color starts striking. And now I'm going to add about half a cup or approximately 120 milliliters of Dharma Dark Navy. And I wanna give this a lot of time to heat up. Although part of me is thinking, oh, I should add the yarn in now. Guys, it's hard. It's hard to decide. It's hard to make these choices. Okay. We are not yet at a boil, but things are hot. Oh, <sighs> deep breath. Goodbye, my love, goodbye. And I'm putting it in and I am swirling it around. And you can see, you can still see those colors in there. We're gonna absorb more of the navy, but it's not even like a, I don't know, it's, if I were to take it out now, it would almost be like a glaze. I think some of it might show through. Um, I do want to absorb more of that color. You can see that the navy is going on. We should have some nice pops that I think will be really lovely. I hope, <laughs> I hope I'm not gonna regret leaving it in, but I don't know, I like what's happening. It's different from what it was, but still beautiful. Okay, I am going to step aside and let the yarn heat for 20 minutes. There are still eight minutes left on the timer, but the dye bath has cleared. I am gonna go ahead and turn off the heat because it's gonna take over 20 minutes for this to cool off, and I'm gonna leave the yarn in the pot. The yarn is definitely, and through the steam you can see, darker than when we first put it in. If we had put it in and removed it before letting it stay in so long, we could have gotten more of a subtle glaze look but I'm excited for the more contrast and we can definitely see some more blues and greens underneath the navy without having removed the resist points yet. So Sarah, I am really, really excited. Oh Sarah, I am so excited already. Part of me, part of me almost wishes I didn't have the resist. I love what this layer of navy did over the colors and this depth and dimension we have in here. I'll need to remember that for the future. But let's remove these zip ties. 
And you guys can all let me know in the comments if you're going to like these brighter pops of color from our resist or if you would have liked the whole thing to be a little bit darker and moodier. But ooh, look at that pop. So you can see the resist points are small in some areas and then much bigger in others because of where uh, in that little hold things on this interior don't get as much access to dye as things on the outside. Um, so that's part of the randomness of this technique. Let's do over here. And these zip ties, when I say they're reusable, I mean it. Like I use these over and over and over again. Um, eventually they might stop holding, but I can use them at least a dozen times, probably even more before that happens. And you can see that they still function. Okay, let's see. Ooh. Ooh, that is so, so pretty. Now, these effects and these pops of colors, is this something that you could do without a resist? Probably. Um, there's many different variegated techniques you can do, but there is no navy on some of these bright sections. And if we were doing um, a bunch of different kinds of techniques, you might not keep that pop in the same way. And here's the final one. And then we can lay out the three wet skeins. Two. Ugh. I love, I mean, I love navy already, but who? Right now, the three skeins actually look reasonably similar, which is kind of nice. But again, if you were knitting with them and you're going one, two, three, all in one project, you might see some difference. But that isn't really just about this technique. But ooh, this is stunning and I am in love with it. Let's wash the yarn. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding um, in here at all. Things are looking really, really good. I am going to add some dish soap in here. And we'll check and see. I see maybe a hair of some bleeding, but not color coming, like the color isn't changing from it. When I start to get concerned with bleeding is when you see either a huge amount of pigmentation or a big color change from what you had in the yarn. But that little bit is normal and fine. And I'm not seeing any more of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash the rest of the soap out, put the yarn through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. If I start to see significant bleeding, I will pop back in. But if I don't, that means that uh, that was it. And yeah, we have no more bleeding. Ooh, this color is beautiful. I am not sure if my camera can give justice to this depth, to this depth and dimension that we see here. In addition to the bright blue teal and that lime green color that we see from before we added on the navy, we now have some navy sections, some forest green, a more moss green, some deeper like marine blues. There are so many colors in here that are the res direct result of the combination of just three different colors. And that's one thing I love so much about layering colors on top of one another. And even though I tried pretty hard to keep the skeins to be really similar, there are definitely differences. This first one has a little more teal, a little bit less blue than the other two. Um, and yeah, it's just a slight variation. I think that it's something like a lot of yarn lines, you would look at them and say, okay, it's the same colorway, but they are those little differences, which is the beautiful, beautiful nature of hand dyed yarn. This isn't to say that there aren't ways you can dye with precision so that way you can have matched skeins of the same dye lot that will work really seamlessly together. But 
this is one big difference between the magic of hand dyed versus commercial dyed yarn. The little imperfections. Not that it's an imperfection, but those little differences, those uniqueness in the skeins of hand dyed yarn is part of what makes hand dyed yarn so much fun. It makes it so fun to play with because you get that extra dimension and depth that you don't necessarily see if you have a true solid, true, true, true solid. This color right here, oh, it speaks to me so much. That must be the teal layered with some of the navy and it is breathtaking. There's some aspects of this yarn that are slightly glazed. If I open it up, it's hard to see. There is asymmetry with the way that the die struck within the strand because it was striking more to the outside, the accessible portion than the inside. This type of effect is easier to see on a high twist yarn um, because the higher the twist, the more resist there is within the strand itself. I'm not sure if there's a technical definition of glazing, um, if it has to be just the outside of the yarn or if it's a layering effect like what we have here where we can see these colors coming through. But either way, I am thrilled with the result of this yarn, whatever we want to call it. Sarah Pyform, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pop Weekly. While one of these skeins is going to go to Sarah immediately, the other two are going to end up in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. The shop is filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos. There are over a hundred skeins with a variety of techniques and dyes and bases. So it's worth taking a look at the listings so then you can kind of see what, list, what base it is. But I always include the video title and the date it was published in my item description so that way you can go and learn a lot more about exactly what went into creating that yarn. There is a link to my shop in the video description and in the top corner of the screen in the iCard. Please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below and let me know what colors you would like to layer together with this type of technique. Engaging with these videos by subscribing and liking and watching is the biggest way that any of you can help support the content on this channel. I had so much fun creating this colorway and I, I don't know, I just like yarn that does have this multi-step process. Whether it is just layering the colors and having a more semi-solid tonal or going a bit bigger with something like this. Uh, you don't have to use a resist technique for all three stages. You could do a low immersion setup to get the bright colors from the combination of the sour apple and the frozen and then add the resist and layer on with navy. But playing around with resists is another way that you can play with color and create these variegated colorways while just kettle dyeing in each step. Uh, this is a way that you could increase a batch size. If you have multiple pots, um, you can fit more yarn. I could fit more yarn on more burners and it's something that could work really well if you wanted to say create a lot of one colorway. Just as we mentioned, there's variation between each of them, but you know, there's no doubt that these are related to one another. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this video. My goal is to play with color and maybe inspire you to give it a try. So I really hope that you enjoy uh, coming along on the journey as I discover and develop my skills as a fiber artist and indie dyer. Thank you again for watching.